Alrighty, so in this video I'm going to share with you five things that helped me get my job as an environmental engineer. But before I begin, I want to give out like a really big disclaimer. I'm not like a college advisor, I'm not like a human resource person, I don't, I'm not a hiring manager at all. I'm just sharing my advice and like my personal experience and what I believe is like what you need to get a job. So I'm in like no way a professional. Okay, so just heed my warning, right now times are tough. You taking my advice right now and like applying it to yourself does not guarantee that you will find anything at all. So that's just like a really big warning. Don't like expect anything out of me. Don't get angry if like you followed my advice and then you don't get anything, okay? So just take this with like a grain of salt. And some of these experiences and advice I'm about to give you, it's like pretty common sense. But sometimes people need to point out the obvious. So again, just common sense stuff for here. Alright, so the first thing is one, have a relatable internship. So if you're trying to step into this career, like if you want to become an engineer, of course you want some experience. It's hard to get like some entry level position because some company has to like trust you to see if you even know what you're doing. So in order to build that trust, they want to see some experience or like some sort of background. And the best way to get that sort of background is through an internship. So hopefully maybe as you're you know going throughout college, getting your degree, you had the opportunity to take some sort of internship, whether it be from some smaller company or maybe your professor, overall just some sort of experience. Now personally for me, I did not have any engineering internship experience. I didn't have that. I had like a biology related internship and this is where I'm gonna bring up the disclaimer again just because you know I had that ability to get my job and you know they just trusted me as it is you know with no experience background in engineering. You might not get a job just because you have no experience. So again what happened to me won't happen to you unless this company like really trusts these people that they're interviewing with you know again that might not be the case for you. So yes, just have some sort of relatable internship experience towards the field that you're going for and then they're more likely to hire you just because you have some knowledge, some previous background as to what you're doing for that position. Alright, so the next few steps are going to be while you're in school. So while you're in school, like while you're at university or college or graduate school or whatever, you want to take advantage of that. You want to be able to, you know, while you're a student and studying, take advantage of every single opportunity that's given to you. While you're in school, you're studying, and you know, you're fulfilling your degree requirements, you should be looking for some sort of research project. So normally, research projects are like given to students by the professors, or maybe like a PhD student or a graduate student. And for the most part, most big universities, they offer these types of programs, usually under a professor. So I didn't know, at least when I was a freshman or a sophomore, about research projects. I just knew like, I went to school, graduate, you know, get the degree and start working. No, change that mindset. Once I found out about these research projects, like these opportunities, I was like, okay, I should definitely get into one. It might be a bit hard if you're like a freshman or sophomore, but once you become like a junior or senior, you know, your third year, fourth year of college, that's when it gets easier because now you've built your knowledge off of university and then professors are more likely to trust you. So that's where it's easier to get in. You want to get into these programs because the professor who's like funding the program, he needs help for the most part because it's a university and they're like funded by grants. You get to just help the professor and like again throw in your crazy ideas and all that is paid for by grants which like you know big companies they don't have universities they do have so they're just basically throwing money at some project that may or may not work so long as they can write some sort of paper about it and what you want to do is you want to have your name on that research project as well so they can say oh this person contributed so then you'll be all fancy and whatever and you have your name on some sort of like research paper so that you can like brag about to your friends or like show off your coworkers or your colleagues or your boss and say, I help be part of this paper. I'm internet famous. You're basically an author and they can like look you up. Like you are, again, you're famous at this point, sort of. But like, hey, your name's mentioned on the paper. Next is again, while you're at school, you should be joining some sort of school organization. So I know like schoolwork is stressful. I know you have to deal with like school and like life, get a balance between those, but then you should still make some time to join some sort of school organization and this is where you sort of socialize you get to you know relax and steam off a bit but then you still build professional relationships with like your students your classmates and this is more of like a personal life building skill rather than like a thing that you put in your resume even though you can so you'd want to join organizations like some sort of engineering club or some very professional related organization just to show on your resume for the most part this is really good because it shows that you're really proactive you're engaging you're you know going out there to sell yourself and you know 
do other things besides just do schoolwork. So for me personally, I joined some sort of engineering club. It wasn't like a really big club because it was like mostly for nerds. The hiring managers who just saw that, like noticed that and they said, oh, you know, that's cool that you joined some engineering club. You know, there's not too many people who do that. It just makes you stand out. The fourth one are customer service jobs. So things like McDonald's, Starbucks, working at a restaurant, working at a movie theater, working at a mobile place or whatever. Some sort of retail, those jobs, even though they're not related to like engineering or very professional, to me, those are like the most important jobs that you should get. So those jobs, they showcase and they really define a character. They define a person. So if you cannot endure through like retail, you cannot go through rude customers, then it's gonna be much harder for you to like develop skills later on. So to every student out there, you need these jobs. Even though they're like low paying, the most unskilled jobs you can get, and they might be even embarrassing just to put like that you worked at McDonald's, I still recommend that you get these. They don't have to be on your resume, but they should be building you as a person. And as you work through these, you just grow and develop better as a person. So yeah, I was a dishwasher back in like my first year. I worked in a restaurant. It sucked. I worked there for less than minimum wage and like for more than eight hours a day. But you know, that helped build me as a person. You're able to endure more because you went through so much more through these psychist jobs. And that's what everyone should have. They should start from the bottom so they can see and realize how bad it is at the bottom and then just, you know, learn from there. And also to treat people who are at the bottom with respect just because, you know, they've been through that situation. In my opinion, if you get these sort of jobs, you just sort of are a better person just because you know how it feels, you have more empathy for people, you realize it sucks, you know, so you went through a lot more, you have like thicker skin, you know how to deal with people, you know how to get around situations, so that you can just sort of builds you as a better person. And lastly, the fifth one is luck. So <laughs> I am very lucky to have my job still. I'm very lucky that my job took the risk of taking me in when I had like no experience at all. And I'm lucky that I had this job before this whole pandemic happening. So I had this job before, you know, it's resilient enough to where like it could survive a pandemic. So that's just my personal experience. For you on the other hand, yes, you're gonna be applying to hundreds of jobs. You're gonna be applying everywhere. You're gonna get ghosted, you're gonna get rejected. You might get like a follow-up interview, but then they, they just might ghost you again. I know it's very discouraging and like you're upset, you're disappointed, you're angry of all things that you know, you're going through this. Sometimes you just apply and then you might just get like the perfect dream job. I know I'm not trying to like discredit anyone who worked really hard to get the position or you know to build up the resume working from scratch. I'm just saying sometimes you might need some extra luck. You might just have that one random friend or one random opportunity that gives you like the exact thing that you needed and that was like beyond your control. So what's happening in the world right now is sort of unlucky like this is beyond your control but you know sometimes opportunity just shows up by itself. So hopefully you follow this advice and you get something. But again, I want to be realistic here. Just because you followed my advice doesn't mean that you will get the same result as me. So go out there and work on those points that you can't control. Hopefully you guys get something. Goodbye.